Hey guys, this is Nero once again from the Overclocker magazine. So today for you, I have the ROG Maximus 13 Hero. So this actually happens to be the first motherboard, uh, Z590 motherboard that I used. And I've had it for, wide, for quite a while rather, and I've watched it just change over the months, just the various virus updates, things like that. And where it is right now, I think it's such a sublime motherboard and such a fantastic board. The first thing that I want you to know is that this is a beautiful looking motherboard. You know, I've watched ROG boards generation to generation. I don't think they've ever looked better than they do right now. There is nothing that's as striking as the ROG Maxima series of motherboards. At least I don't think, in my opinion, I don't think there is. For a $500 motherboard, and I think locally it's about 11 grand or just under, it's supposedly a mid-range or high mid-range board. I think it's high-end, but motherboards have gone all the way to $1,000 now or 20 grand. So what used to be mid-range or high-end keeps shifting. The long and the short of it is that this is an 11 grand motherboard or $500 depending on where you are. And for that kind of money, you actually do get a lot of motherboard. In fact, if you look at all the features that are on this board, and compare them with a Maximus Extreme board, let's say from, what, five years ago? This motherboard has exactly the same feature set. There's nothing that board has that this one doesn't. So those motherboards have moved up in price. However, so has the Hero motherboard. But that's enough about the price. Let me tell you what you get for this sort of money. So you're gonna get two Thunderbolt 4 ports or USB Type-C, which is pretty awesome, but that's not the only thing you get double off. You also get 2.5G LAN and there's two of those but if you don't want to use any wired connection you also get of course wi-fi 6 and bluetooth 5.2 so the standard stuff that you would expect from a high-end board you also get a new audio controller i think it's the alc 4000 series like 4082 or something of that sort the reason i don't know the specifics of it is simply because i don't use onboard audio anymore even though i can appreciate that this has some of the best audio components that have ever been put on a hero motherboard if not the best actually Okay, so let's talk storage. There's three M.2 sockets, of course. One of which, or rather I should say two, are actually PCI Express 4.0. And you're able to get two instead of the one that you get on most other motherboards, primarily because the other M.2 socket is actually wired or sharing lanes with your first PCI Express slot where you would insert your graphics card. It's a sacrifice that I would be willing to make, but obviously if you have like an RTX 3090 or any other, high-end VGA card you may not necessarily want to do that when it comes to the ROG accessories that you get with this motherboard it's the typical ROG stuff but you do get something called a VGA holder which prevents your VGA card from sagging you attach it to the motherboard and it actually helps your VGA stay straight kind of a neat feature but it's not something that I think I'm going to be using so one of the big selling points for me with this motherboard is just how well built it is component wise. On this one, for instance, it's a 16 phase uh, power circuit. So 14 phases for the V core and two phases for the SOC. The power stages here are like 90 amps, the ones that go to the CPU and for the SOC is like 70 amps. The important bit here is that you can pump so much power or current to your CPU over 1200 amps i don't think you're going to need to do that even when you're doing extreme overclocking but it's nice to know that they've built such a robust power system and they have the heat sinks to match as well it's no longer just uh it hasn't been for a while but there was a time when you just got this thick block of heat sink that didn't do much heat sinking at all or rather heat dissipation so this has a lot of fins and cuts and angles and things like that that actually help increase surface area and make sure that this vrm runs cool now this is the first part of this entire maximus experience that is not as great as I would have hoped it would be. And that's not because there's anything wrong with the ROG BIOS. I think it's perfectly serviceable, you know, and it's actually got a lot of stuff and they keep adding stuff to it. So it's perfectly fine. The only issue I had with this is that I couldn't get any of the DRAM profiles to work. So for me, a, a huge selling point of the ROG, the Maximus boards is that it actually makes extracting performance from your rig much easier. and the most obvious way to do that outside of just the uh, all core or ASUS multi-core enhancement is actually the DRAM profiles. 
there are so many profiles for you there that allow you to just pick one and essentially get an overclock that's either 24 7 overclock or one that you would use for extreme overclocking and that's really a useful feature one that i wish would extend itself to perhaps other motherboards as well but i understand if it doesn't because it actually is a distinguishing feature that the maxima series motherboards have but with that said and because it's such an exclusive feature i would have expected it to work but it didn't i ended up settling at 4266 because i didn't want to spend too much time tweaking this memory um, as i was struggling to stabilize 4600 4800 even though i eventually did get 4600 running just fine and i got 4800 running just fine even though the performance wasn't good. I had very low write and copy performance for some reason. I suspect it's a setting in the buyer somewhere, but I didn't get time to go and investigate and actually fix that. The motherboard is able to OC memory very well, but the profiles that you get there may not necessarily work for you depending on the DRAM that you have. For the benchmarks and just evaluating the rig, I ended up settling at 4266 CL16. And you can see the Geekbench 3 score, it's under 10K, but it's like a high 9, 9,800 or so. Subsequently, since then, I've been able to do a lot higher than that, uh, take it to almost 11K. But at the time when I was recording this video, that was where I was. So a lot of the performance figures that I got were for 4266. So imagine you had bought this motherboard at the time and this is all you could get. You would be kind of disappointed and you would be thinking that, oh, Rocket Lake is supposed to overclock memory better and this motherboard is supposed to have memory profiles and just be better at overclocking anything. And yet here I am stuck at the same DRAM frequencies I could have done with Comet Lake or even before. Well, again, the motherboard was new at the time, but right now it's actually able to do much higher frequencies than I've been able to show off. I mean, I've seen frequencies as high as 5333 you could actually check out this uh, check out the maximus 13 thread on hw bot because there are some results by some overclockers that actually show these super high frequencies and that just proves how capable this motherboard is but literally ddr 5000 actually works with hynix ic's and it works just fine seemingly I wasn't able to do that, but I am sure many of you will be able to achieve that, or at least I wasn't able to do it with the ICs that I had. And with that said, that's the Maximus 13 Hero, a board that I think is beautiful, works well, powerful, but one that I cannot exploit to the maximum capacity because it just has so much. However, if you are going to build a high-end rig for the z590 platform i see no reason why you would buy a more expensive motherboard or a more high-end board than this one honestly what would the what would be the one feature that you would want to have on this motherboard that you would get on a board that's a thousand dollars outside of a full coverage block for all the various components on the board going higher than this in price is not going to net you anything i personally believe that from what i've seen on this board like i said dual 2.5 g lan wi-fi bluetooth thunderbolts gen 4 m.2s tons of fan headers tons of usb ports tons of overclocking profiles when they do work I, there's really nothing to force this motherboard at the only thing i am aware of that people may have an issue with is just the price but again if you put together all these features and you rewind a few years back or the equivalent features that this board has a few years back you find that that was the extreme motherboard and this maximus 13 hero has just caught up with that and giving you the same features but just using a different name so with that said let me know genuinely what you guys think of this motherboard remember to share like subscribe and i'll see you guys on the flip side so take care and peace